and welcome back. And as you can probably hear, I have a different microphone this time. Anywho, again, I was searching through YouTube with the keyword Slovenia, spelled the English way, and found this. Good evening. Thank you for coming out in this cold night. And I'm going to read to you a few poems from my new manuscript called Death's Air. And then I will read from Passion Seeds, my book that came out in 2014, and it's available here at Logan Berry. These first poems are a selection of poems that deal with Slovenia post-World War II. For all you non-continental folks who struggle with geography, here is a map to get an idea what place is she talking about. So the collection is called That's Air, and this first section of the Slovenian poems is entitled the Moans Below, Souvenirs from Slovenia Post-World War II. World War II, you say? Well, that was a fun time, eh? Occupied by the Hungarians, by the Germans, by the Italians, and by the Croats, who once we fought were our brothers. Uh, yes. Fun times, fun times, World War II. There was also this group of people, as I recall, who turned against their own nation. Call them Domobranci. <clears throat> the specific breed of traitors, Quislings or whatever you might call them, uh, that lived in Slovenia. So to give you an overview historically, there were two factions in Slovenia post-World War II killing each other. As said before, we had traitors, and well, after the war was over, we had to deal with those traitors. I mean, you won the war, you don't want a bunch of collaborators running around now, do you? Stirring up trouble. Now, the worst thing about this uh, here is that you're a plain American. You're not even an expatriate, you're not even a... Uh, a descendant of Slo uh, Slovenian, um, what do you call it, expatriates in America. You're sticking your nose into a business that you have no part of. I mean, at least if you were Slovenian, I would get to call you all sorts of names. Now all I have is a fat American idiot and bitch. And you had the Domobranci on one side that were Catholic, and you had the Partisans that were Communist on one side, so they were both Slovenian. What to mention, honey, is that the Domobranci were actually an auxiliary SS unit. They were the German army, in fact. The enemy. While the Partisans were the domestic army, not only Communist. This war was a unification of the Worker Party and the Liberal Party who decided to fight the occupiers and won in the end. Let me remind you, we won the war! Earlier, Domobranci were actually an auxiliary uh, SS unit. They swore their loyalty to Hitler and when you mentioned they were Catholic, of course they were. They uh, swore loyalty to Hitler, be Hitler before God. Yes. How nice. Seen in this final photo, Heiling. It's cited at the end of May 1945 that 12,000 Slovenian soldiers were sent back to Slovenia from Austria. Slovenian Landwehr were definitely not Slovenian soldiers. They were Slovenian. They were soldiers, but they were not Slovenian soldiers. They were German soldiers, and not even that they were forced to do it. They were volunteer German soldiers who fought their brethren in a bloody war. But when they arrived in Slovenia, the train doors were open and they were slaughtered. 
they were not slaughtered right out of the train. That would be very messy. What they wore were beaten and imprisoned until they were taken to the forest along with other traitors, the Ser Serbian Chetniks and the Croatian Ustashi. And then they were in the forests shot by their own people. The people they once betrayed because they liked the Germans better than their own blood. More than more died after this. This history is very close to me because my next door neighbor is Valentin Mersol and his father saved 10,000 uh, Slovenians from being sent back to Slovenia where they would have been killed. He was in a refugee camp wow. in Austria. Wow. So I've heard firsthand a lot of these stories as well as read some historical readings of this. So the first close to you because your neighbor's father helped save Nazis from facing justice. Yeah, that is very close to you. My great-grandfather uh, was actually hunting for those same Nazis hiding in the forests after the war to bring them to trial. So, yeah, interesting, interesting. Very close to you, indeed. Fucking fat American. This poem gives you a little bit about the history, and it's called Precision in Slovenia Post-World War II. Wow, what a poet. Such titles, so gripping. Kete and Muran don't uh, even reach to her knees in their works. Really, such poetry. 600 a day in two cattle cars. Always confused as to why people keep mentioning these cattle cars. I mean, during World War II and after World War II, it was completely normal for people, armies, and everything to be transported in cattle cars. Do you and do you really think somebody would put traitors in a nice uh, tapestry um, upholstery uh, passenger train? Seriously, stupid Englishman. The situation remedied in two weeks. Doors opened and ammunition hailed. Doors closed and on the corpses went to the trenches. I don't know where he got this idea that they were killed in trains. I found no such data. Um, because this would be very messy and hauling dead bleeding bodies from cattle cars that by the way you don't want blood over your cattle cars because you're going to be transporting all sorts of shit later um it's much easier to drag them living into the middle of the forest and kill them there fucking traitors this is not germany this is slovenia post world war ii fratricide but any side is killing, regardless of who. It's blood running and hearts clenching, hearts ceasing movement. Brothers, sisters, aunts, cousins, nephews, godparents, all looking out the corners of their eyes at their own blood relations. One land, one language, one religion. Into two factions, partisans and domobranci, communism and independence. Did you just say communism or independence? You do realize that the Domobranci were the, the side that was on the side of the Germans. The side that wanted our country to be cut into uh, four different countries. The side that wanted Juliana to be part of Italy. The side that wanted Maribor as an integral part of Germany. The side that insisted on Prekmurje uh, becoming a part of Hungary, the side that burned villages, those who killed and betrayed their brethren. Are you seriously equating them with freedom and independence? Tito and God. No. At this point, it was fun for me to add that in the partisan, there were many priests, actually. This comes from the fact that many priests 
war in the Tiger, the precursor to the armed resistance which formed in fascist uh, Italy, actually in uh, Slovenia that was a part of Italy after the Rapal Treaty, after World War One. A disagreement. Who shall we follow? Shall we follow God or should we follow Tito? There was no church burning going on, although I would like that to see. Uh, but, I mean, many partisans were religious people. They went to church, they prayed. This has nothing to do with religion, honey. The next poem is... What you are mourning. Traitors who were given awards by the Nazis. Those who clap among you, please remember, you are Nazi sympathizers. Not welcome in this country, ever. It's inspired by my Slovenian mechanic in Chesterland, Ohio. Hmm. And he too was in a refugee camp before coming over. I have an imagination of what could be behind his eyes. And this poem is also something that you need to know about it is there is a line about uncovering bones. Slovenia today, still, they are finding bones rising up from these mass shootings. Mm. So this Rising up, per se, because bone, bones tend to not rise up. They are being dug up by sympathizers of the traitors and the traitors who survived. And now they are demanding all sorts of shit that they do not deserve even be alive to be able to demand those things. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Now, this is the pledge that the Domobranci took to Hitler. The people you praise in your songs. Read it. I will subtitle it for you. Goodbye. And I'll see you in hell.